Hey guys, welcome back to Tenta Outdoors. My name is Al Tenta. Today, we're getting firewood. We're gonna fell some big trees. We're gonna buck it up. We're gonna delim, and we're gonna load up my truck, getting ready for this upcoming winter. If you talk to people who get their own firewood, they enjoy doing it. It's very hard work, but there is something special about heading out in the bush, enjoying nature, cutting your own wood and heating your home with the wood that you've provided for yourself. Just a little disclaimer before we get started here, I am not an expert tree feller. I have never taken a course. I have no certified training in this area. I've just learned through other people, reading articles, books, watching videos. So make sure you do your own research and make sure you're safe when you're felling trees. So as most people know, getting firewood is quite a dangerous activity and you need to take the necessary safety precautions. Number one, you should be wearing a helmet when you're felling trees. You also need to make sure you have safety glasses, ear protection, wedges, and very importantly, chainsaw pants. So before you cut down a tree, it's really important that you clear the area that you're working in. You're going to get rid of any low-hanging branches and make sure that the area on the ground around the tree has nothing that you can trip on and you have an escape route to get out of there in case something goes wrong. So the tree I'm going to fell today, it's a larger tree, but it also has a smaller tree here right beside it. Now that also is leaning in the same direction, which is a good thing. But the problem is that the branches of the large tree and the small tree are all interwoven together. You can see that their branches are kind of intertwined and uh, falling just one or the other. It's going to pull some difficulties, potentially. So if I was just going to uh, fell one of those trees, then the branches will hang up and it might get stuck or it might push it in the direction where I don't want it to go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a notch in the small tree and the large tree and do a back cut on the small tree and just leave a little bit larger hinge so when the big tree goes hopefully the small tree will fall with it as well that's the plan anyways we'll see how it goes so i'm going to cut a notch in both these trees because they're going to fall in the same direction now you always cut the notch in the direction you want the tree to fall but your notch should be should go no deeper than 25 to 30 percent of the tree and the angle of the notch that you cut should be about 70 degrees. I've gone about a 25 to 30 percent through the tree. My notch is roughly 70 degrees, maybe a little less. It's really important that these two cuts, this cut and your bottom cut, line up and make a nice, straight, even line like this. Okay, really important to do that. Make sure that you're not, uh, your, your cuts don't go further into the tree on either cut. It just makes it more dangerous and your tree less predictable. Okay, the next step of cutting down a, a tree after the notch is doing the back cut. There's an important step you have to remember. It's called leaving a hinge. A hinge is a section of the tree that is not cut. And the thickness of your hinge should be roughly 10% of the tree. To put it simply, the hinge adds control and safety to the fall. Now I've left one a little bit thicker on this tree. When I drop this large tree, the branches are gonna push it over. And if it doesn't, that's fine too. So I'm gonna come around this side, grab the camera, bring the cameras back here. I'm gonna do a back cut and leave 10% of the wood for the hinge. I'm going to put in some wedges to keep it from pinching back in my saw 
or falling back and something going wrong. It's just a really good practice. Just make sure you don't put it in too far to hit your saw blade. Perfect! I love it when a plan comes together. It's time to start bucking. I've got it bucked up to what I think is about a load, maybe just shy of a load. So I'm gonna to try to lift them in the truck without splitting them. If they're too heavy for me to lift, then I will definitely split them before I go, but I just prefer to, sp to split them at home um, at my leisure. So we're gonna give it a try, see if we can get them in the truck. Let's go. Okay, no one ever said getting wood was easy, but uh, it is a good workout, that's for sure. Try to lift with your legs as much as you can. Get your back in that safe position. So I left a few of the, few of the sticks closer to the base, a little bit longer, because my wife and I like to make uh, tables out of them. We let them sit outside for about a year, get nice and dry, strip the bark off, sand them down, stain them, put some uh, polyurethane on them and they make really nice end tables. I've got a couple in the house already but I'm always looking for a few more. They're a good gift for friends as well. It's nice having some smaller pieces as well like the little tree beside it. Fill in the gaps between these big ones. Just makes your load a little bit more efficient. Alright, the worst is over, it's break time. Hey guys, thanks for joining me tonight, I got a beautiful full load of fur. This is about three weeks worth of burning for me in the winter. Really enjoyed myself, even though it was hard work. There is something nice about being outside in the bush by yourself, working hard, and uh, I get a lot of satisfaction out of this. I hope you learned something tonight. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to my channel, Tenta Outdoors. My name is Al Tenta, and we'll see you next time.